Hey guys, this is a very important video if you're a wood carver because nearly every person who's dealt with wood has had issues come up like cracks, bug holes, rot. Uh, wood is a natural product and it has natural imperfections. And today we're gonna talk about easy ways of repairing those imperfections. Uh, but first, this video is sponsored by Fundamentals of Wood Carving. This is an online school that I started. Uh, that's right, this is a video sponsored by me. Uh, over three years ago. So this is an in-depth, uh, actually four years ago now, because 2020, it's 2024, time is flying. Uh, it's an in-depth experience on carving the realistic human face, amongst other beginner projects like whittling a basic cardinal, whittling uh, kind of simple projects. But the, again, the, the school really focuses on the human face, portraiture. So if that's something you're interested in growing in, there's projects for beginners, intermediate carvers, and advanced carvers, and it's super helpful. I mean, it's helped a lot of people, including myself, as I've learned through teaching you guys and through getting advice and help from you guys as well. It's an online resource. It's probably one of the biggest of its kind in terms of carving faces in wood. So check that out in the link below. And without further ado, let's get into this repair video. All right, so the first technique is used to fill large gaps or areas of rot. In this case, we've got both a big chunk missing and some rot area behind it on this uh, kind of elongated portrait. And I'm gonna use the block cut technique to take a piece from the top of this piece of wood to fill it in, to fill in. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut off a piece from the top and we're gonna place it in the uh, missing area by cutting out an even space and uh, filling it. So we'll do that first. The important thing is to make sure that the orientation of the wood is the same in the block area as it is in the piece of wood. So in this case, um, the planes of the fibers, because it's a cottonwood bark, it's actually a bark, the layers are going up and down. I want to make sure and have it go consistent with the direction of the grain. So in this case, since this came off here, I'm going to make sure that it's oriented this way. All right, so the first thing I want to do is use a file, a piece of metal, even a gouge to clean out the extra material, the bits of rotten junk. Okay, that's fine. Next, I'm going to use a knife, just a straight blade knife, about an inch and three quarter bench knife, to cut out a section for this to fit into. So, uh, remember again, the orientation should be the same as the wood, in this case, uh, like so. So, I'm going to try and cut out a block area here. This knife has been sharper before. I'll use a different one. It's a little better. Okay, and the, and the real reality here is that uh, it's not gonna fit perfectly unless we really work it. And instead of really working it, I'm actually gonna uh, leave some gaps in here to show you another way of you know resolving cracks in areas that have uh, just need of slight filling. So we're gonna to get to that in just a moment. And so no need to be overly perfectionistic about this. I mean, yeah, by all means, if you can uh, do a really good job, uh, do a good job, right? But uh, in this case, we don't have to because I actually wanna use it as an opportunity to show you a different technique. So now I'm going to use, normally I wouldn't be using the carving as a backboard for this, but I want you to be able to see, I'm just going in and I'm sizing the piece of uh, scrap bark like so, checking out how it fits, fits pretty well, and uh, I'm gonna glue that in place. So I'm gonna start with, uh, typically I would use wood glue in this case, and then surround it with uh, super glue. Uh, the reason that we do this is because our, you know, you know, wood glue is a more permanent solution than the super glue. But uh, in this case, for the sake of time, I'm going to use just the super glue here. So I'm gonna go on either side of the block, like so. Make sure and get it evenly all the way across. Being generous here, you don't need to be, <laughs> you don't need to be this generous, but 
Again, I don't want there to be any gaps here. And we can always clean up the mess afterwards. All right, this is where things get interesting. What we're going to use is an accelerant. And an accelerant is um, some material, uh, uh, basically just what it sounds like. It just speeds up the process of drying so that we don't have to wait around forever for this thing to uh, get carved out. Now, when we take this block and we start to carve it down after this dries, it's not going to be a perfect fit, but I'll get to show you something kind of neat about filling in just a moment. In fact, this is probably the coolest thing um, you know, about, about this video is this filling technique. So hold tight. At least I think so. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to start to pare this back like so. Just using whatever gouge you have. And again, you'll notice there are some gaps here, which is okay, not a big deal. Okay, it looks like we've exposed some more undried glue, so I'm gonna light pressure, spray it once again. Okay. All right. Now, this is a great opportunity for us to use the fill technique that we talked about. I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to grab some 120 grit sandpaper here. All right. And uh, I'm going to use the super glue with that. So to start, I'm going to let this dry a little bit, sand it out. Now, if you've got a crack this bad, it may even be worth just peeling the entire face uh, off, you know, in this case, face off, because that's where this is located. But uh, many times if I have a large crack like this, and it goes all the way through or mostly through, and it's compromising the quality of the carving, I'll tear it off before it gets to this point, just to make sure I'm avoiding the heartache of having to recarve new areas because of breakage. So that, that's something to keep in mind. But in this case, we're ignoring it. We're just using it for the sake of example. We're going to use the super glue to fill these gaps, especially this crack right here. So this is a gap filling technique that I use. Uh, it's actually adapted from a, from another world of uh, repair. And it was taught to me as a secret not to be shared with anyone. So I won't go into what that uh, field is of repair, but it's very useful in wood carving and I'm happy to share about it. So, all right, so the idea here is I'm using the super glue to fill the gaps and then I'm lightly sanding with a heavy, with a 120 grit. And what that's gonna do is that's going to fill the gap. The dust from the wood is gonna fill the gaps like so. And that wood mixing in with the glue. And again, it's important that you let this accelerant dry because the accelerant is actually going to, um, it can screw up this process because uh, you, you want the glue to stay wet for a little bit, at least a few seconds, long enough to mix in the super glue. In fact, I may not have waited long enough, but definitely uh, up here I did, so you'll get to see what that looks like. And you kind of go back and forth, filling a little bit more glue over that gap just to make sure that it's filled. You can go over this area as well. That was a little too much. Let's take some of that off. I will carry it away there. A little excited for the camera. Okay, once again. Notice I'm switching to a new spot on the sandpaper as it gets caked with glue. And then again, that accelerant's kicking in and it's making it a little bit more difficult to, to take care of. But either way, it's filling in that gap. And we can use fresh piece of sandpaper to clear off the, the uh, extra super glue here. Uh, I wouldn't use a nice tool on this if you have a crappy old beat up tool that you're not afraid to dull because of the, the positive Sandpaper, you can use that here. That's what I'll do.
Okay. Well, this is good. We wanted to, I wanted to re-expose this anyway. That looks like we had uh, the glue drying a little too quickly. Just do a small area at a time. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay. You want that dust to mix in with the glue. Like so. And I use this to sometimes fill really small screw holes. Again, you don't want to use too much super glue because that'll make for a mess. But you see how it's kind of making a paste here? And it's filling that gap and it's blending in nicely. We can do that down here. Almost like magic. Look at that. That crack is almost completely gone right away. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue. Again, the key here is to let that accelerant uh, dry out. You, <laughs> you can see what happened the first round when I did that. In fact, that's a good lesson. I'm glad that happened during this video because I haven't really had that happen before because naturally I'm not rushing as much as I am for this video. Okay. All right, so you get the idea, right? That's a, a big improvement from where we were before and uh, still have some remnant of super glue from the premature hardening as a result of the Mitropel, the accelerant. But, you know, with some shaping and some work here, um, it's going to look like the accident barely happened, right? And that's okay if there's a little bit of a crack. Uh, it's just way, way better than it was before. And uh, it's just a way to cover up rot if you're not trying to uh, allow the, the rot to live there. Uh, you know, in some cases, I'll actually leave just in these imperfections or cracks as long as they're not compromising the wood. But it's good to know how to hide the small, thin ones. This is a pretty extreme example again. And... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily always go to this length. If the piece of wood is that rotted, I may end up trying to preserve it or make it a part of the sculpture. Um, but this is a good way of filling the material. You can also use a shim technique. In this case, I didn't have to, but if the crack is large enough, you can actually wedge a small piece of bark, a thin piece, into the layers with some super glue and accelerant and carve them out and then use the sand fill method to fill any gaps. Uh, anyway, these are the... Uh, the techniques that I use, you know, I will say really quickly, one thing I don't recommend doing is mixing in the wood chips from your carving into glue to make a filler, right? As long as you have wood chips in that combination, in that homemade filler, it's gonna look chunky, it's not gonna look natural. Uh, you're far better off if you have a fine dust. If you have some very, very fine uh, sawdust from the same piece of wood, you can then mix in some wood glue to that and then make your own paste. But that's effectively doing what we're doing here. And the super glue in combination with the dust from the surrounding sanding area combines to make a really great fill. So anyway, that's that guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this uh, helps you out in your wood carving journey. Oh, and before I forget, if you want to learn more about carving realistic faces, like the one that you saw in this example, uh, but actually even more realism than that, because this is more of a stylized carving, then check out the online school. It's a project I've been working on for the past three years that is an in-depth solution for those learning the realistic face. There's over 80 videos, 50-something projects, and a new project added each month. So check that out in the description below. There's stuff for beginner, intermediate, and advanced carvers there. It's one of the largest online resources for carving faces in wood, and I'm uh, very proud to offer that. So check it out in the link below. See you guys. Take your vitamins.